In this video, we're going to talk about Hibernate and primary keys. So what exactly is a primary key? Well, it's basically a way that you can uniquely identify a row in a table. Um, this is a unique value across that given table. And also, it cannot contain any null values. So think of the example of a university or a college. You have a lot of students there. Each student has their own unique student ID. So the key here is that it's unique. So two students can't share the same ID. They each have their own ID number. And that's, that's an example of a uh, primary key. Now, how can we use this in MySQL? Well, when we set up our database table in MySQL, we ran a script. And this script had a, an entry here for a column ID. Uh, we specify that ID is not null. And we also make use of auto increment. So every time we add a new student, it'll automatically increment the student ID. And also on the last line, we specify that this ID column is the primary key for the table. So uh, MySQL will actually handle auto incrementing the ID every time we add a new student. And that's a really cool feature of MySQL. I like that. Now, in Hibernate, when we build a class, we make use of an annotation, um, at ID. And I mentioned we talk more about it later. So this at ID basically tells Hibernate, hey, this given field is a primary key. So this field maps to a column in the database table, and that column name is ID. So we basically leave it up to the database to actually generate a primary key for us. Now, if you want to be explicit, you can tell Hibernate how to actually perform the generation. So you can tell Hibernate, hey, use a given strategy for generating that ID. So if you don't specify anything, by default, it'll use the um, appropriate strategy for that given database implementation. But here, I like to be explicit and, you know, write it out longhand. So here we could say, at generated value, so this is a new Hibernate annotation, and we say strategy equals generation type identity. So we're basically saying, hey, the actual primary key column uh, for this given table, that's the column that we'll use for the generation strategy. So in our case of MySQL, we have our ID column set to auto increment, and we leave it up to MySQL to handle the auto increment for us. So you may wonder, what are some of the other generation strategies available? Well, here's the laundry list. So you can say generation type dot auto. Here, they'll basically pick an appropriate strategy for the particular database. You can also have generation type of identity where it assigns the primary keys using the database identity column. And that's what we used in the previous slide there uh, for the auto increment. Or you can make use of generation type dot sequence. Um, assign primary keys using a database sequence. So like if you're using like an Oracle database, um, Oracle has this concept of sequences and you can leverage that. Or you can make use of generation type dot table. So here you assign the primary keys using an underlying database table to ensure uniqueness. Now you'd have to kind of look at your actual database implementation and find out uh, which one is supported by your given database. And you can look at the actual Hibernate docs for all of those details. Uh, it varies across all the different databases. Uh, but for MySQL, um, the most common uh, generation strategy here is the generation type dot identity. And that's a good one because it basically allows you to leverage the auto increment feature of MySQL. Now, I have this special bonus bonus for you because you're probably saying, well, hey, for my company, we have a custom implementation or a custom requirement where we need to generate our own ID using our own custom business logic. So this is where I say, and wait, there's more. Uh, so you can actually create your own custom generator. All right. So you can write your own custom code for generating that ID. Uh, you can do it yourself using Java code. Alrighty, so that's really, really cool. So the basic process is that you'd create a subclass of the org hibernate ID dot sequence generator class. And then in your subclass, you would override the method generate. So inside of this generate method, you would do your own custom business logic for determining what a new, what the next ID is, and you return that as a value. And you simply plug that in the hibernate, and then hibernate will use your 
custom generator. Uh, now, a, a word of warning here is that uh, you have to make sure that um, your generator will always generate a unique value. All right. You also need to make sure that it works fine in a high volume, multi threaded environment. Also, you need to make sure that if you're going to make use of a cluster or a farm of servers, you want to make sure that this generator will create a unique value in a clustered environment. All right. So you need to kind of think about this first before you go off and write your own generator. But the really cool thing though is that you can add your own custom generator um, if you needed to, if you had those appropriate business requirements. All right. So that's a bonus bonus. And uh, you can simply go online and uh, get more details on how to actually provide the implementation code uh, for a sequence generator. There's a lot of examples out there uh, on the web. All right, good. So this is good. Um, in the next video, we're going to move into Eclipse and we're going to play around with primary keys with Hibernate and I'll show you some very good examples. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Yoo-hoo!